Welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. My name is Michael Hamlet and I'm the founder of Chaomatic and in this show we discuss all topics sales and marketing but this one is special because what happens when you've done the sales and all the marketing and you've actually closed the deal and then you send an invoice but the invoice does not get paid. So I've invited Anne and she will go in detail through what you do next. So Anne, explain to our viewers what you do. Yes, hi, I'm Anne from uh, Justified. Um, so basically, we help all entrepreneurs to recover their unpaid invoices quick and easy. So that's where we stand for. Very good. So typically what happens is I send out an invoice, let's say 30 days, let's make life easy, 30 yep. days, and then nothing happens. Yes. So what do I do? Um, first of all, it's very important that you send um, a reminder, written reminder to your written. Um, Email clients. is good? Email is good. Um, a registered letter is um, recommended. I it's immediately? Not, no, you can send, first of all, you can send emails, you can um, have a call. It's, it's basically, uh, it depends on your culture as well. Mm. What, how do you um, yeah, go on I, with your clients? I see a lot of companies, not corporates, but a lot of companies where they're smaller. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but if I do this, then my customer would get upset. Yes. Um, so that's why, for instance, in many cases, I advise start with an email before you do register the letter. Right? Yes, of course. Yeah. I think the best way is to indeed, uh, first of all, do it um, the gentle way. So uh, send an email or pick up the phone and just um, ask them to uh, pay attention to uh, the is, Isn't an email better because it has, leaves a trail? Well, in the end, um, what's most important that you, um, when you take further steps, um, that you can prove that you have uh, sent a reminder. Yeah. So in that way, an email is better because you have really proof. Yeah. Um, and therefore, I would say a registered letter is um, safer, but it's not, um, yeah, it's recommended, but you don't have mm -hmm. to send it. One of the things I told me is that if somebody doesn't, if the company that you send the invoice to doesn't complain within 10 days, mm -hmm. it's fine, they've accepted the invoice. Is that something true or is that? Yeah, I know that that's something that's uh, going on in the world, but um, no, it's not, it's not so, true. It's, so uh, I'll sleep bad again. <laughs> yeah, I am afraid so. <laughs> yeah. It won't work in court. For so, sure. so they don't pay, I've sent them an email, I phoned them up. What are the, the options? What, what can I do? Well, basically, um, you have um, four, um, four options that you can uh, go to. Uh, first of all, you have an incasso agency. They mm -hmm. will send um, a couple of reminders and they uh, will try to uh, get your invoice paid. And you pay them a percentage or how? Um, most of them work with a no cure, no pay rule. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, if they can't get any further, they will have to um, work together with uh, a bailiff, um, which is yeah. also known as a gerechte rider amongst yeah. um, the Dutch speaking people. Um, then secondly, you can go to a lawyer, um, mm -hmm. which also uh, will send a reminder in his name, which is a little bit more pressure to it. Um, and he will also represent you in court when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, then the third option is a bailiff, so a gerechtsdoorwaarder. Um, he will also send a, a reminder um, and they will also do the execution once you have um, a judgment from the yeah. uh, court. Um, and then the last option is a factoring agency and they will basically uh, buy your unpaid invoice for a smaller amount mm -hmm. and then they will try to recover it through the three uh, ways I've and what's, mentioned before. What's the fastest? Well. Because There's I mean, I, I'm listening and yes. I'm thinking, this is scary stuff. Indeed. If I send out an invoice for 2,000 euro, mm -hmm. I, it's going to cost me more, right? Yes. So, okay, let's, let's ignore the corporates for now because that's a machine that's running. They'll mm -hmm. do it for 50 bucks. I get it. So what, what if I'm somewhere in the middle? Well, actually, there's not, um, there's not one right answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was afraid you would yes. say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's the way. Um, we did a lot of research to it uh, lately yeah. and um, we discovered that the best way um, to decide which is the best recovery party for you um, is not based on uh, your own um, situation but on the situation of your debtor. So ah, um, basically the it's... Side. Yes. So um, each of the uh, parties have their own um, way of working. Um, mm -hmm. They have their own cost structure and and it's, it's not uh, logically to paint them all with the same brush, um, mm. as you might say. Um, so actually, you have to really look into the debtor situation to decide which of those options um, mm. will be best for and you. And is there one 
faster than the other or more expensive? I mean, court is the most expensive one, clearly. Um, because a lawyer, I mean... Well, I have to go back to my <laughs> previous <laughs> answer, that it all, uh, all depends on your debtor situation. Um, you really have to see um, which are the steps that I have to take uh, for him to pay mm -hmm. um, and which can I leave out. And it's hard to know upfront, um, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, where we come in and we are specialized in yep. making that decision um, to make sure that you don't uh, make any um, steps that are not um, obliged to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and also then we can make it shorter. What are the things that we should for sure prepare if we go there, we have thinking about this. Are there things I need to prepare properly? Of course, the right contact, the right name. Is there specific things I need to think of? Um, what we basically need is your uh, invoice, so mm -hmm. with all the information on it, um, which should be there. Uh, that's anyway, yeah. yeah. So let's let's go back to that. Maybe very basic. Yeah. Is there something that, for sure, I, I mean, what should be on the invoice for, to be hundred percent safe? Um, yeah. First of all, the address, of course, the yeah. name of the company, um, the contact. contact person. It should be on there because um, I've seen a lot of invoices go to accounting. Um, it's easier when you have a contact person, but it's not necessary. It's not if necessary. we have an address and, and really the uh, company or person that it's... Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if, if talking about a company, if it's uh, for a, per, um, a consumer, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a different story, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you need the name B2B, of course. Yes, yeah. uh, but in a B2B context, you just need an address, the name of the, of the company, um, and preferably also the um, FAT number. Yeah. Um, Description of what it is. Or can that be a code that not really... For um, the parties that will work with it, that's not necessary. Okay. But for yourself, it's of course uh, good to the, have it on there. A PO number? I'm just naming all the stuff because I, I dealt with a very large corporate and of course they give you a PO number and then you're really clean. But yeah. that's not needed. No, not necessary. No, no not at all. Um, okay, I think so I'm, I'm looking at Peter. We are on the safe side here, right? <laughs> Um, and what's also very important, um, or that's an advice I would give, is to have uh, well-considered um, general terms and conditions. Because ah. I noticed that um, that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs lack these days. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, it's very good to have um, a damage clause in your um, general terms and conditions as well, to include it there. Um, that way, you can um, basically already have some of your costs, recovery costs covered by that. By so that. it's not penalty, but it's damage claim. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I would say if you would add a 10% of your invoice with a minimum of, let's say, 75 euros, then you're safe. That's a very yeah. good guideline for that. Um, and I will add to that as well, if you can make those uh, general terms and conditions mutual, meaning that when you lack um, mm -hmm. to deliver, then your client has the same right. And that's also good because when it will come to court eventually, and then you have a much, a much more um, chance that it will be granted to yeah. you as well. One of the things that I see also is that a lot of companies, they send an invoice, they, they mm -hmm. do a service, but they don't have a signed offer or something. Mm -hmm. So when they send the, the invoice, yeah. in essence, it means the terms and conditions are the ones on the invoice, mm -hmm. right? So I don't need an upfront signed terms and conditions document and everything, or of course, it would be better to have it, but it's not essential. It's not essential, but of course, it's yes. always better if you yes. have a sign. But uh, my dear friends, <laughs> you, it's better to have it up front sign, right? Of so course. Clean. Yeah. Big corporates <laughs> then will you're never more see. safe yeah, anyway. Absolutely. So. Okay. So, um, I talk, I have the four options. I go there, I have the, if, and if things really go, so how, how much time will it take in average? What I, what I have to think of. Of course, it depends on the legal system and all of it, but is it weeks, days, months? It's really hard to say because once again, it depends on the situation of the debtor and um, if he can pay or not. Um, but I would say f for six months, that's general. Um, a to good get your money. Yeah. Um, Scary. But it, yeah, it is, of course. And uh. it's just yeah, an idea. It can, it can differ, differ every time. And it's very hard to put a real number on it. Um, but if you do it via the right party, it can be shorter, yeah. of course. <laughs> so some final advice you have, you say? Um, half. I think fi as final advice, I would say, first of all, have uh, well-considered um, general terms and conditions. That's very important. Also make sure that you have sent uh, a written uh, reminder. Um, 
traceable. That's, yeah, that's very important as well. And thirdly, choose um, the right recovery party for your uh, unpaid invoice. Um, you can do it via Justified, of course. Uh, of and course. otherwise, it's very important just to have a partner that you trust, um, but also one that is very transparent in his way of yeah. working and um, who can really tell the steps that he's taken and so you can follow from a distance. Yeah. I think that would be a, a good advice from my side. Perfect. Now, every guest that gets into my show, yes. I ask them the same few okay. questions at the end. Shoot. So the first one is, so where do you get inspired? What do you read? Where do you go for blogs or websites? Where do you get your information? Um, I think what, what inspired me the most is um, other entrepreneurs, really mm -hmm. talking to them because um, each entrepreneur has its own story and it's very um, inspiring to hear how they do it, uh, what they struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, so through networking, um, through working together with a lot of people, mm -hmm. I think that um, is my uh, biggest source of inspiration. Um, of course, reading a lot of books. I think um, for our firm, um, we had a lot about the four hour work week. Of course. So, yeah, yes. It's really inspiring <laughs> and it, it gave us a lot of inspiration on how to to handle the things uh, and uh, 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 yeah, that was a, a nice yeah. one to read. Um, but most of all, I think, um, yeah, other entrepreneurs that are more, most inspirational okay, perfect. to me. So there are so many moving parts, especially when you're a startup and everything's yeah. moving. So how do you bring focus? That's a very difficult one, <laughs> for I sure. Know. That's why I'm asking uh, it. Yeah, there are a lot of things that you, you want to do and, and you had a, lo a lot of heads on and making decisions all the time. I think um, what works best for me is really prioritize the things that you really want to do and um, the things that you think are a nice extra. Mm -hmm. And uh, with every idea that we have, we really put a mark on it like, okay, is this um, really something that we need to do right now? Or do we put it somewhere in the future and just make sure that we don't forget it, mm -hmm. um, but we don't put our focus on for the moment. Yep. Um, but it's, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> I know, so, so very close to that is, how do you say no to the things you do not want to do? Um, I think that's, the same way, always thinking like, do we really want to do it? Um, if it's for ourselves, really like, is it, um, is it something that we need to do and we need to do it right now? Then we say yes, and otherwise we know, okay, it's... it's and how do you say it? You just kind of... A lot of salespeople that are in this show, yeah. they say, I kind of say yes, but I mean no, and kind of push it away, or you actually bluntly say... Mm, I think we really would say it um, because we really have a vision that we want to help um, mm -hmm. other entrepreneurs and um, we can only help them by being honest. So if we, mm -hmm. um, we receive, for example, an invoice that we know the chances are very low, we will also say that and like yep. this one is, uh, we advise to, to stop it and, and to make no further costs. So in that way, we would just say no to them. And yep. I think that's very important and it's, some kind of a philosophy, mm. I think, to do it that way. So what's, what's your, at the moment, your, I mean, what's your biggest failure up to, up to now where you say that's something I sh will never do again? Whew, that's uh -huh. also a tough one. There are a lot of things that pop into mind, um, a lot of learnings that we had. Um, I think the most important one is when we uh, have to work together with partners. Um, to be um, a little bit stronger in deciding with who we should work with. Mm. Um, ask a lot of questions and, and So you really, can say no. <laughs> yeah, and really think about, okay, um, do we share the same um, culture and the same idea? I think yeah. that's very important because then you can find each other. Yeah. Um, when you like that, it will be a struggle in the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say, make sure that you're on the same line yeah. um, before you say yes. <laughs> and then a final one, where can people learn more about your company? Um, for sure on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and that is? www.justified.be. Yeah. Um, we will also post a lot uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and you can always make uh, a connection with us on LinkedIn as well. And we are more than happy to answer all your questions um, that everybody might have regarding unpaid invoices. So. Super. Thanks for joining the show. You're and more than welcome. It was fun. And now that you know how to get your unpaid invoice paid, actually, you know exactly what to do. If you like what you've heard, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for a lot more shows coming your way. Thank you for watching.